Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of why you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can can and a can can, a can can, a can can, and a wheel. Now we're off to. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. And we're going to be talking a little bit about Whitney Houston, Bobby Christina. Uh, we got Tyler Henry, the medium, the Hollywood stars medium to contact our dead loved ones. Now, I don't know what you all's feelings are about talking to the dead, uh, but I'm a firm believer that once we um, transition from this plane of existence, there is no more. Uh, now, that's not to say the angels that follow our deceased ones uh are gone maybe they relay messages from their realm but whether they are uh after they deceased and they come back as angels uh delivering us messages but i don't really think the person actually comes back because it states that in the bible if you read it um the dead don't know what the living is doing okay and the living don't know what the dead is doing so um yeah, but I, I find it very strange <sighs> and, and and fulfilling at the same time that uh, Bobby would still be struggling about Whitney Houston. Even though he married someone else, it, it seems like it's still some uh, feelings, strong feelings that are there. And maybe, just maybe, and it's just my opinion, guys, if she was still living, I think he would try to make it right with her and get back with her uh but like i said they were going through a very very tough time both of them were on substance abuse and um pills of well substance abuse can be pills or alcohol either or and they both were suffering pretty pretty bad about it especially whitney uh because that was her go-to thing to function to get up out the bed to go into the office and uh record and do um what do you call it interviews on social media on different platforms so uh it was very tough it was a tough hold to row especially when she had a mom like um uh, Cicely, I think it's a Cecilia, Cicely, Sissy, 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 um, Houston, as well as, uh, sister-in-law by the name of Pat. Okay, hounding her, wanting her to do these things, and like I said, when you get into that crazy Hollywood life, you get exposed to a lot of things you thought were just made in movies okay they're actually brought to you to the forefront to see how you are accepting of that lifestyle or not accepting of that lifestyle but yeah uh you get a, a, a good preview of what's to come if you decide to you know align with the elites okay so you can be illuminated and get down and dirty and do ridiculous horrific things for them from time to time okay but we got um, Henry over here. He's a little um, somebody big in the Hollywood realm of life who calls themselves talking to our past deceased loved ones. Okay. And um, it shows how much uh, it just shows how much um, Bobby Brown is still in love with something or someone that he felt he felt he could have did better by. You know, it's like he's still trying to blame himself for not being able to save Whitney and definitely save his daughter and be their protectors. But, hey, it just is what it is, Mr. Bobby Brown. You do what you can, but you got to learn how to forgive yourself because these people are gone. You know, they're gone. You have the pictures as memories. You have the memories in your mind to live out vividly in your day-to-day um uh struggles in life okay or life itself i can't tell you how to feel because i never lost a daughter or uh, i can't tell you how to feel uh you lost your son as well i mean i can 
uh, have some empathy towards you because a lot of people don't see animals as family. But uh, until you get an animal and you are able to open up your heart to that um like for me i can say my puppy he was like my son um i used to always have to take him to the doctor when he got into some things and for his yearly checkups and his allergies were bothering him yes they get medicine just like we as humans he never ate dog food he, well he ate dog food until uh i figured out i wasn't gonna pay no more for no dog food when you know, the bible says you know the uh animals are your dog can eat your scraps okay so uh he always ate uh food from what we cooked uh i clothed him he had a bed to sleep in uh i mean just a lot of things because i feel like okay this org organization called peter they don't like you misabusing dogs I'm on, it's almost like their little police uh protection agency that they can call or somebody call in on you and the adult that's supposed to be your loved one or owner they get in trouble real real bad but like i said i don't understand why um animals can't uh have uh social security numbers because lord knows i had to pay for uh cleaning bills pulling teeth bills uh sick visit bills wellness bills uh allergy bills um uh, he had to eat he had to sleep he had to have shelter and yes i provided all of uh, that for my um son elijah uh, and you know as i like say once you let them in your hearts it's hard to understand death you know it's just like you have a brother or sister you have cousins you have your mother and dad um it's, it's just hard to accept death when it's put at your doorstep and you wish you could have especially if you were with them uh at their passing which i was with my aunt and i was with my uncle and it's just like a, a big loss that you feel like you just feel empty you feel confused you feel mad uh just all the different emotions uh coming at you at once time but uh i pray for bobby brown that he can find some type of peace some kind of solace to move on uh which you know he does have other kids but i guess to have had a loss of a son and a daughter at such you know at that that them being such early or young children young adults trying to just live their life and then it's cut so prematurely so uh yeah i i definitely can say i empathize with him because i never lost i can't sympathize with him but yes i can but it would be untrue because i never had lost uh, a daughter or son in that retrospect but if you count my puppy i had since um he was a little something something uh to up to he was 16 years old it took a lot out of me it's just I, like i lost a family member i did lose a family member and i still struggle with it today even though my daughter has her little pup pup who it seems like he's my grandson because she ain't gonna have no children it doesn't look that way because uh she ain't trying to at this time and uh, I don't know if she could handle it with today's issues with COVID and the monkeypox and anything else they want to bring to us on the forefront. But, uh, yeah, it was sad to see him still kind of upset about her um, not being here and then her, his daughter not being here. And I'm sure his son played a part into his, uh, even though uh, Henry was there trying to connect with his loved ones. Uh, his previous wife Whitney as well as his daughter it seems like he would probably put his son Bobby in the midst of it all too because I think he had uh, I think it was Bobby Jr. who died in suspicious type ways uh, as well as Whitney as well as Bobby Christina okay but uh um, they they um it aired I don't know on ET Entertainment and it's on the YouTube as well and it was uh identified or labeled as tyler henry connects bobby brown to whitney houston and bobby christina uh hollywood medium uh you know and the bible tells us to stay away from sue seekers uh mediums and anything that's uh trying to connect with the dead it's un um unlawful or ungodly 
but you know you're gonna have people do what they want to do and i'm not here i'm not i'm not here for it i'm not against it it's just something i don't practice i don't seek uh people uh, to tell me my future or my past or what's going on in my present. That's why I have the Lord to do that, to direct my steps according to his will and way. But, you know, let's go and listen to the little excerpt we have from that encounter that Bobby experienced with the Hollywood medium Tyler Henry. When Bobby opened the door, I had no idea who he was. <laughs> I didn't even have a clue. Nice to meet Bobby. you, sir. Oh, great to meet you. My name is Bobby Brown. I grew up as part of a group called New Edition. I went solo and ended up marrying Whitney Houston. Awesome. Well, I'm so happy to be here. Thank oh, you for having me. Oh, me too. If you look at my life and my career, there's been a lot of ups and downs. This is a therapeutic time in my life so everything that i do is is about becoming a better man and a better person let me see it's kind of where we're going it's kind of random who's carol what carol who is carol because i'm hearing it in my ears carol 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 that's my mother's name okay okay do you know on your mom's side who worked at a school my mom carol school thank you who passed in december my dad. Okay. So I feel like I have to break up dad. Your dad is much more straightforward when he's presenting himself. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. When he's coming through, he's, he's the one who's kind of putting the center of attention on himself. He's having me acknowledge at the time of passing, did he die of cancer? Yes. Okay, because I feel like he's showing me cancer, cancer, cancer. Did he smoke and then stop smoking? Yes. Mm-hmm. Went to my lungs. But he did, he did quit. Yeah, he quit for yeah. 30 years. My gosh. My father, was, he was the talkative type of guy. I mean, he, he made sure everybody in the room had fun when he was there. Oh, yes. Center of attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what he said about my father, how he was um, coming through so dominantly, that was my father. Tyler hit that on the head, too. Do you ever remember your dad having to take off like the outer layer of his clothing when he came home from work. And the feeling basically is like, if I'm covered in mud or dirt or like, my dad, for example, is in construction, he does tile. And he's- My dad was in construction okay. also. Interesting. He's placing himself in work and acknowledging work. And he's feeling like he was more comfortable working than he was communicating sometimes when it comes to fully talking about his emotions, his feelings. That's my father. Your dad's way of showing his love was working and in his mind, if he was able to provide to the best of his ability, then that was his way of expressing love. He comes across and looks back at his life and he wishes that he would have told you as a little boy, I love you and I'm proud of you every single day. He wishes that he would have been able to have that one-on-one -on -one time because he understands now in retrospect that to some extent certain things weren't good enough from his perspective. And he wishes he would have done some things differently but he still comes across very connected and loves you very much. But he as a father has understood some lessons and he now knows how important it is to communicate and to talk about how you feel. For him, he was just a hard worker. He just wanted to work. He just wanted to be able to do that and that was his way of providing. He's having me just acknowledge this feeling of like, I need my son to know how much I love him because I wish I would have said that more in life. And no matter what you would have achieved, he's still coming through and like, he still needs to hear it. He still needs to hear it. Oh boy. Oh. It's a lot to take in. Yeah. Well, this is exactly what I needed to hear. Good, I'm so glad. Oh boy. He's learned. He's learned a lot. And he takes accountability and he understands and he comes through with so much love and clarity. But he understands now in a way that he didn't understand in life. And he has a good soul. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that my father came through and was able to tell me um, exactly what I need, needed to know to move on. I have um, all the answers that um, I was looking for. Uh, I have, I have a woman coming through. 
having me talk about her heart. And this is very clear in the way that this comes through. She's very insistent to acknowledge, no matter how I died, I need them to know the heart. I need them to know the heart. And there's a feeling of having a susceptibility to a heart arrhythmia and also having a susceptibility just to a heart issue. But I can distinctly tell there are other aspects to this passing. People talking about this or discussing this heart thing, but it's something else. It's like, or I die of something else, people think I die of something else. Mm -hmm. And there's just an emphasis on basically saying, like, people don't know the full picture of how, to what extent this really affected me. But it's a weird way for it to get presented from someone to just randomly pop in. Have there been recent discussions about an individual having, like, a heart thing? Have people said someone yeah, had a heart Yeah, my, my ex-wife. Okay, this feels heavy. Oh, boy. She, she used um, drugs, but um, the way she passed was not a way that um, I would have... Ex I can accept sure. that she passed. Um, wow. The way this comes through, and I, I, I'm going to handle this sensitively, the feeling that comes across is that if someone may have used substances to some extent throughout their life, the feeling is that I know that when I utilize these substances, I'm not going over the amount that I would know to normally right. take. This doesn't feel like someone who's necessarily directly blaming drugs, even though there's obviously contributing factors, but there's something else. it's heart. It's heart. It, heart is fundamentally what she perceives as being the catalyst to her. to her death. Just because the amount that she would have used, she'd done before. And so the feeling right. is like, it didn't kill me then, why would it kill me now? Unless there's something wrong with my ability to kind of process or metabolize this. Okay. She's very selective in the way she comes through. She's not giving me, like, a ton. Um, she's very private. When she's, yeah, when she's, she's connecting with very, very, very private. When he brought up the heart situation, it made some sense. He was bringing forth um, my ex-wife. And, I mean, I don't think he knew that it was my ex-wife that was communicating to him. Um, oh, God, okay. She's having me refer to a reference of remarriage. She's having me acknowledge a thumbs up, <laughs> which references to getting married and being approving of the person we're with. And I feel like this would be her way of acknowledging this sense of happiness that you've been able to move on. to you by the love that you have for them and that they have for you. Oh. This woman was here and she transitioned another woman who passed away. She is connecting hands with what looks like a child. And she's coming through and she wants everybody to know that she helped her little girl when her little girl transitioned. It's and my, it doesn't. My ex-wife and my, my uh, daughter. My daughter passed and my ex-wife passed also. She's coming through and giving me this feeling of, <laughs> I was there to hold her hand when she made her transition, when she left. People would have felt her mother around when she passed away. She comes across and she, um, <laughs> so this is so random, but there's a joke about a Tina Turner impersonation or someone impersonating Tina Turner, and it comes across in a funny way. Remember that I'm saying this. The Tina Turner thing is amazing because my daughter used to, my daughter used to dress up as Tina Turner and run around the house doing all of Tina Turner's <laughs> dances, and it's just like wow, who, nobody could have known that, nobody. The feeling that comes through is basically an acknowledgement from this younger female that she knew how much she was loved, that she was told how much she was loved. Oh. I'm sorry. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. When her mom died, me and my daughter was estranged. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Of course, sometimes answers can help. Yeah. 
love it. Your daughter comes across. She does not in any way blame you or have any frustration with you or have any negative emotions associated with you in any way. And so there's this connection on her end of just acknowledging, like, I want you to know that I love you and that I'm not upset. She does not blame the old you. And she's saying the old you. <laughs> I don't know why this is coming across, but she loves her mom and she loves her dad so much. And she understands you both were in extraordinarily unique situations, but she comes across basically saying, I understand they did what they had to do to get by from their perspective. And she acknowledges being a little girl and she was very smart as a child, but she wanted you to know that she wasn't as detrimentally affected by these things as people might have said that she was. Because when she comes across, she's like, I had an amazing life. <laughs> I had so many opportunities. I have some things here. Sure, That absolutely. was a picture of me and my daughter. <laughs> and my baby girl. That's... My, tw my twin. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is surreal. That's yeah. Interesting. Wow. Well, I'm glad she let me know exactly what I needed to know. Oh my gosh. That is so surreal. Wow. <sighs> yeah. My ex wife was Whitney Houston. I, I gathered after you seeing that, that picture. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Whitney Houston. Yeah. Right. I didn't realize that the person I was bringing through was Bobby Christina Brown and Whitney Houston. I am in complete shock. <laughs> wow. Yeah, <laughs> Whitney Houston Brown, right? <laughs> For me, it's not like the sixth sense, where, so I don't see these people's faces oftentimes. I just kind of communicate the message. To me, they're just a soul. It's very humanizing, and I think actually a really beautiful thing that when they come through, she doesn't come through as Whitney Houston. She comes through as your former wife and so much more than just what people thought of her ass. You've, you've, hit, you've hit the nail on the head with everything that I wanted to hear, everything that I needed to hear. <sighs> I don't know how to say, um, push me to move on. Yeah. Um, I'm just really thankful. I'm really thankful that you came. You, you have a gift that is beyond, beyond what any psychiatrist or any doctor could, you know, ever, you know, tell me or give me. They are very much a part of this new life, just in a different way. So, please know that. Okay. He just, he just made me feel comfortable with um, going on with my life, you know, which is a great thing. I needed that. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Bobby, Thank you I so, so much appreciate for it. I really feel, definitely feel, that I've gotten some closure and some peace in my heart today. That was, man, are you kidding me? What? Well, that was not a typical reading. I am so baffled, and, and that was incredible. I, Whitney Houston and Bobby Christina Brown just came through and I am in shock. Okay guys, that was the reading <clears throat> that Tyler Henry did for Bobby Brown for him to know uh, what allegedly uh, Whitney and Bobby Christina wanted to let him know. Uh, which was to move on with your life. We agree with who you married and your other kids. And we know you loved us at this time or the time we were on the same plane of existence. But it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to um, not think of us uh, as you did. You didn't do what you needed to do to help us. They, how Terry, brought, I mean, Tyler brought it home to him. was like, you did everything you could do. A lot of people are speculating that it was this when it really was that. And I was there for Christina when she wanted to cross over. She didn't come or look, be confused uh, at her transition because I was there. And like I say, I already told y'all how I felt about that. <clears throat> and um, it's just a tell touching story that he still holds Whitney Houston. And you heard it yourself when he said Whitney Houston Brown. Okay. 
And I'm like, uh, I think y'all were divorced, Bobby. But if you still want to hold on to that and your present wife is not really concerned with how you titled her still, uh, that's an amazing thing. That's a good woman you got. Um, but I don't know. It has to kind of make her angry here and there that you still have this love for this woman who's not even on this planet anymore and you gauge what you're going to do or not do by what you felt how Whitney would have wanted it or how Whitney would have felt about it or Bobby Christina would have wanted it and how she felt about it so hopefully they gave you a lot of closure so that you can live in the present and not in the past and go on with your future and hopefully Tyler Henry helped him with that but that's all I got for this video guys I have no more and I will see you on the next video bye bye